Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on portal hypertension. Portal hypertension is an abnormally increase in the portal venous pressure. So portal venous pressure means refers to the blood pressure in the portal vein and its branches that drain most of the intestine to the liver. And portal hypertension is defined as a hepatic venous pressure gradient more than 5 mm mercury. So the normal pressure gradient would be around 1 to 5. So if it is more than 5, then it is defined as portal hypertension. So this picture here shows the anatomy of the portal vein. So you can see here there is the superior mesenteric vein which drains part of the intestine and also the splenic vein. So the superior mesenteric vein will connect to the splenic vein and they will together form the portal vein. So this is the portal vein over here, where the portal hypertension occurs. And for the pathophysiology, a chronic increase in portal pressure happens due to some mechanical obstruction of the portal venous system. So it is, an, it is almost an unavoidable consequence of liver cirrhosis, and there are also a lot of complications, where I will explain later on. So the pathophysiology mainly consists of two main causes, which is due to the increase in resistance to portal blood flow and also increase in the portal blood flow. So if you look at the second point, when there is liver cirrhosis, which can be due to various causes, there will be architecture distortion inside the liver, where there are, the nodules might compress the sinusoids and also there might be active intrahepatic vessel constriction causing an increase in resistance to the portal blood flow. So it is harder for the portal blood to flow through. And then they will later on cause the formation of portal systemic collaterals. I will explain more on this later on. And another cause is due to the high arterial pressure due to splenic arteriolar vasodilatation on the low pressure venous system. And this will let on cause an increase in the portal blood flow. So these are the two main causes causing portal hypertension. So the causes of portal hypertension can be divided into prehepatic, intrahepatic, and also posthepatic causes. For prehepatic causes, it can be due to massive splenomegaly, portal vein thrombosis, or congenital atresia. Intrahepatic causes are liver cirrhosis and also other diseases that affect mainly the liver. For example, hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, schistosomiasis infection, Crowley disease or congenital hepatic fibrosis can also cause portal hypertension as well. Posthepatic causes are the causes after the liver, where it can be due to a severe right-sided heart failure, constrictive pericarditis, hepatic vein thrombosis, which is also called as the bach kairi syndrome, and other causes include thrombosis of the inferior vena cava or congenital malformation of the inferior vena cava. So the investigations that we can do are like ultrasound of the liver and spleen. So these are the possible findings of this investigation, where I have listed over here. So we, in cases of portal hypertension, we will see a dilated splenic and superior mesenteric vein, splenomegaly, a reduction in the portal flow mean velocity, dilated portal vein, and we might also see some portal systemic collaterals. And other findings include ascites, nodular liver, or thrombosis in this portal vein, splenic vein, or superior mesenteric vein. And these are the complications of portal hypertension, which include ascites, and this is due to an increase in fluid shift, leading to increased lymphatic drainage from the liver, which overwhelms the thoracic duct capacity and causing the hepatic lymph to flow into the peritoneal cavity. Formation of portal systemic shunts, portal hypertensive gastropathy, congestive splenomegaly, and also hepatic encephalopathy, secondary to hyperammonemia, where there is high in ammonia, exacerbated by the portal systemic shunting. So these are some of the complications of portal hypertension. This is a picture showing the portal systemic shunts, the collaterals that may form due to portal hypertension. So you can see A, B, and C are the main 
conditions. So A is there might be esophageal varices, B there might be internal hemorrhoids, and C is caput medusa. So first for the esophageal varices, it is at the esophageal region and we have to take note there is the portal circulation and the systemic circulation. So the portal circulation would be the esophageal branch of the left gastric vein shown here and the systemic circulation is the esophageal branch of the azygos vein which is bracket over here. For internal hemorrhoids, the portal circulation is superior rectal vein whereas the systemic circulation is the inferior and middle rectal vein. And for caput medusae, the portal circulation is the right middle and left colic veins where uh, sorry the portal circulation is shown over here the para umbilical veins bracket portal over here whereas the systemic circulation is the superficial epigastric vein which is the superficial abdominal veins over here So to treat portal hypertension, we can give medications such as beta blockers or octreotide. And for example, for esophageal varices, if there is any upper GI, GI bleeding due to esophageal varices, we can do variceal bending or balloon tamponade. And a definitive treatment for portal hypertension would be transhepatic intrajugular portal systemic shunt, TIPSS. So the surgery includes the placement of the stent which creates an artificial channel within the liver and it will establish the communication between the inflow portal vein and the outflow hepatic vein. So it creates a shunt to this is to treat portal hypertension. And this picture shows the TIPSS. So that's all for this video. Thank you.